So in a sense, they cannot kill the soul because the soul is body and spirit. So they can kill the body, you become a dead body, but because your spirit is in God's hand, God can resurrect your body anytime and be, again, you become a living soul. Guys, happy Sabbath. This is again the Open Veil TV. Of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We are going to continue with the um, the book of Proverbs, chapter 1. Uh, so, let's get into it right now. Okay, so we are starting from verse number 8 with that actually it says, My son, it basically is the enticement of sin. So, um, first thing first, we have to figure out what does enticement mean and why is it um, important to know to know what it sh or what we should and shouldn't do so the word enticement <coughs> means the state or condition of being seduced or led astray the act or practice of enticing yeah and that and thus and this sin uh, basic basically it means Basically, it means to be led astray. And I'm pretty sure no one wants to be led astray in this life. So, the enticement of sin, of course. Why is it called enticement of sin? Is because we know that sin, at first, it will taste good. It will smell good. It will feel good. And then, you're thinking, wow. I'm getting a good deal. And next thing you know, you get into that problem and you can never live. So, that's why it's called enticement of sin. My son, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. Um, okay, so we've been looking at those words already. Instruction. And um, now, when it says the law... So I said right here, it says Torah. Basically, if you guys remember the the Torah is the the Torah basically is the the book of the law. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, or the book of Moses. So the what is the law? The law also means direction, instruction. So basically what the Bible is saying is um when you are at home, you know. Remember to listen to your father's direct, your father's or your father and mother's direction, their rules, their instruction. Um, and I'm thinking, in in this one is actually because the title is called the enticement of sin. So basically, you want to listen to your father and your mother's law regarding sin and what to do, what not to do, and what. I mean, what and what not to do in order for your sin not to entice you in this life. So it's not talking in a negative sense, it's talking in a positive sense. Um, so meaning the parents are, are giving the children the um, the advice to have a morally sound, um, God-fearing life, basically. Verse 9, For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head and chains about thy neck. And no, he's not talking about like literally chains, you know, people like to wear chains around their neck, right? It's not a literal chain. Basically, it's like when you, if, you know, when you actually wear a chain around your neck, you're always going to know it's there. You don't have to look at it. You're going to feel it when you walk in. It's going to bounce on your chest again. So, in this sense, it says, spiritually speaking, you're going to know, okay, I shouldn't be doing this. It doesn't mean you're not going to fall to sin or fall to temptation. But it means when you fall into temptation and, and, and then you sin, you're going to basically get back up, ask for grace from God, and then move forward with a better uh, understanding. Because sometimes you learn after you fall, and it's... um. It does happen 
to some people actually. Um, ornament. What is an ornament? And again, ornament is like that. It's kind of like that jewelry thing, right? Um, yeah, you know, basically. Um, if I had to look at that, if I had to look up that word, let's look at the word ornament. I'm so I wouldn't be surprised. Oh. Yeah, it's is that um. Oh come on. I think everyone would know what it means. Um, ornament. Yeah. So, the now, I know the Bible also speaks um, kind of against um, ornaments, like wearing many of these things. But in this case, it's talking about grace as being your your adorn with grace. And of course, if you're adorned with grace, then it's a good thing. It's not a literal ornament that you wear. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. So if they are trying, if they are leading you astray, remove yourself from them. Uh, and if you already know that they are living a certain lifestyle, then don't go with them, because you know they're gonna be doing something that is bad. So consent thou thou not, meaning don't consent to what you are doing. Don't go with them. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood, let us lurk privately for the innocent without cause. And we are living in a country where this is the... I'm going to put it that way. Most businesses are not going to be um, doing anything that is contrary to verse number 11. Because most businesses, if you if you are trying to grow your own business which might risk their business to fall, they're going to lay wait for your blood and kill you. I mean, look at all those people that have been killed by, you know, the monetary system, uh, I would actually say bank system. You know, they want to, they come up with new ways of making money move and then next thing you know, they are dead. So, yeah, if you're going to, if whatever you do is going to end, prohibit them from doing evil, then they're going to kill you so they can keep doing evil. So, basically, yeah. Uh, let us swallow them, verse 12, let, let us swallow them alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. Yeah. Um, don't be surprised. They, some people actually just disappear and you have no idea what happened. Now, we know actually nobody disappears. It's just that those who were supposed to be there to tell the truth, um, they got paid by the murderers so they can keep their mouth shut. So nobody actually is dis- nobody actually dip- disappears. It's just that the truth tellers are being bought by the wicked people. And why? Because they they actually consented to do it. They didn't walk away from the the enticement. They went right into it because they value money over uh, everything else. Even their soul. Verse 13 um, We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. We know all that what that means. Precious substance? Well now that would be called what? Maybe diamond gold, um, sapphire, uh, emerald, uh, you know, money, that's part of it too. So, and of course the spoil is whatever is left from that person. If you have to take that person's car, house, uh, if they have private jets, that's another thing too. It's there. So, the, basically, it's God is saying, don't don't try to follow after this type of lifestyle. Verse 14, Cast in thy lot among us, let us all have one purse. Um, I think that's actually talking about that new way of thinking now. Meaning, let's have one banking system. Let's have one religious mindset. Let's have, let's all so-called 
coexist. They want to make sure there is no division by having everybody compromise on their actual faith. So if you're if you're a devoted Christ like likeness lifestyle then you can't really coexist with somebody who is not. Why? Because you guys are going to be in conflict with this. So that coexisting, that let's have that one banking system and all of that, those are basically having one purse. So if you don't want to be part of that, you are basically dead. Um, my son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. For their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Yeah, as I mentioned already, I, I, I don't think this is uh, something that is new. We already know that people are going to kill anybody who is actually want to do something good because they themselves don't want to be don't want to do anything good and once what actually happens is good people don't peace don't peace off wicked people wicked people get pissed off because they see that good people actually exist they have to get to that position by lying killing stealing and do all that bad stuff and their conscience reproves them of that. And then when they look at somebody who's doing the right thing, the right way, and they're becoming successful, they cannot see that, so therefore they have to kill that other person. For instance, look at Cain and Abel. Abel didn't do anything to Cain. But guess what? Because Cain didn't want to do what is good, and Abel did the right thing, Cain killed Abel. Abel didn't Abel didn't um, menace Cain. He didn't prohibit him from doing what he was doing. He didn't even um, threaten Cain. Just because he existed and he was doing the, the right thing, Cain was not happy with that because he, Abel, would not do as he did. And because of that, we know the story. Surely, verse 17, in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. Yes, so that part actually is a terminology for a people. So, for instance, when Satan, when Raul says that Satan is laying snails for bird, he's actually not really actually trying to, in, to, to snare birds, right? To ensnare bird. The bird represents people, meaning they want to basically what is saying if you decide not to follow these people not to entice yourself with their sin or quick to kill people and all that to do evil stuff they may come after you they may come after you but in vain would they actually try to get get to you now that doesn't mean bodily speaking or physically speaking they cannot harm you because they can but spiritually speaking they cannot touch you yeah, they can kill the body, but not the spirit. You know? So in a sense, they cannot kill the soul. Because the soul is body and spirit. So they can kill the body, you become a dead body. But because your spirit is in God's hand, God can resurrect your body anytime. And be, again, you become a living soul. So yeah, they can touch your body. That's what God said. Fear not the one that can only kill the body, but not destroy the spirit. But fear him that can kill both body and spirit, meaning the soul. So, um, verse number 18 and 19. And they lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privately for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. Yes. So what that means is when they try to put a trap for you, they themselves fall into their own trap, their own snare. Why? Because at the end, God is going to vindicate anyone who actually lives according to his principle. And 
as you mentioned in, in those verses above, um, God says, do not walk with them. Refrain from following where they are going. Why? Because in the end, whenever they say, oh, we're going to wait for them, for those people to kill them, basically they are the, they are the same one that are going to fall into their own trap and be dead by their own um, wrongdoing. So, the enticement of sin, guys, doesn't lead to a happy ending. It leads to you being a victim of your own wrongdoing. And again, this was again the Open Veil TV. Food for thought.